we we went and spoke to Miss Holly Thornton, and uh, we asked her some general questions under the guise of scribes slash journalists. And uh, it's part of scribe. A scribe journalist is the same thing if you think about it. Definitely isn't, but a nat twenty is a nat twenty. That's true. Uh, we talked. We asked about her reputation. She said it was generally all right, except for with the people who are kind of on the lower end of the economy. Economy. She said she had some uh, job slash fun for us near her mines. We went, and, and I fought, I fought Mister Mister Gorag. I kicked his ass. It definitely wasn't a close shave at all. <laughs> I uh, uh, gambled it, even though I'm a bard, I am a paladin, not a bard. And now I am rich. The most satisfying moment for me was kicking him in the face twice with my action surge. Uh, that was a pretty uh, accurate summaration. <laughs> I believe neither of you currently have inspiration, so you both gain it. I did use mine last session, and I gained nothing yeah. from it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I also use it and gain nothing. And Spoon also gains 200 XP for his victory against the champion. Ice. Putting him just a little bit ahead of the rest of us says in terms of leveling up. So, there's a chance you'll level up before us and suddenly be the front man in a party of all melee combatants. <laughs> <sighs> At least we got some casting going on in here. I mean, I'm going into, I'm going into Battlemaster, so I'm basically just going to be a For Honor player. <laughs> Alright, so the ring got cleared at the end. Get that going before I forget about it. Uh, another match goes on in the background as Liss is settling his first round gambling winnings. Having won uh, 22 gold pieces off the 10 to 1 against Spoon. And the one. So, you uh, stupid idiots. So he's sitting kind of in the high seats right now. And uh, apparently they think Krell's gonna got a better chance against her opponent because she was given five to one odds without even knowing her, <laughs> who her opponent would be. <laughs> we'll see how well that holds over. Did you see my brilliant battle list? Earth. It was one of the most amazing and brutal battles I ever seen. Yes! You should have seen my, my battle against El Brahmana. That's the only man I ever lost. Well, not man, he was actually a bull. A bull? Yes. That's why I was so hesitant when Douglas brought us Maurice. He reminded me of El Brahmana. I see. Plot twist, it's the same bull. <laughs> Me and my brother have been talking about that for like a week, and I just thought it was funny. Why would well, you fight the bull, though? Why? Because I wanted to prove I was better than it. <laughs> I wasn't. I was not better than it. But that was some odd 20 years ago. I'm a much older man now. And I think I could take a bull now. Uh, I see. In a fight, right? <laughs> yes, in a fight. My two bare hands versus its bulking mass and horns. Sorry, I had to do that. I didn't see that meme everywhere. <laughs> uh. It just hit me. Uh, so yeah, that fight's 
raging on in the background. It seems to be pretty evenly matched across the board. I just rolled the same song twice in a row. I think whoever Krell ends up going to find is going to get absolutely destroyed. I have faith in her. I also have friends in my... Um, I have faith in my comrades. Yes. Well, Speaking of... Her, I see comrades are just and in everyone with a communist symbol on their chest. And apparently, they believe Krell has a better chance against who she is fighting. Unbelievable, right? I trumped that guy by about six inches. Oh, maybe he's a halfling. Uh. But it is a strange. Who is she going to fight with? I don't know. I, I assume it'll be someone around her height. So a gnome or a halfling, another goblin, perhaps. Yes. Like I would, over. maybe someone a bit larger, perhaps a dwarf. Krell will move over by the ladder, getting ready for her match, getting herself hyped up. Damn. As the oh, Ruth for her. As the in-between match comes to the end with a submission victory of all things. Hour! see a fight through to the end. Unbelievable. Maybe he couldn't take it any longer. <laughs> well, in all fairness, he did just nearly get his arm snapped, so... So yeah, the clerics uh, come they, in, they... heal the two combatants, get them cleared out of the ring. Uh, there's a couple moments pause as debts are being settled. And now, next in the ring, the former champion and previous running challenger, Omir Claiborne! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No, Krell can do it. I believe it. You watch as a seven foot one Goliath leaps into the ring. Perfect three point landing. She, she can she can take this guy. Uh, of course she can. He's got yeah. gray skin and a series of weaving tribal style tattoos all over his body. Mm-hmm. Can I prepare Leo, uh, prepare Q runes? <laughs> uh, he's got a big metal plate that goes over his the entirety of his lower jaw. As if that's about the only thing holding his jaw on and likely the reason he lost his championship. Um... This guy, uh, this guy looks big and slow. I'm, I'm sure Krell can dodge all of his attacks. I pick up my, my holy symbol and start praying. I'm gonna fucking what do I, what do I have? I know I have something. Hold on. <laughs> Quit texting me. Um. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take out my loot, which I, which I get from my background, and start like playing a song for Krell. <laughs> what kind of song? Um, one that has a lot of like one that has a negative emotion behind it. Was like, yeah, this guy fucking sucks. 
This guy is awful! Kick his ass! A violent song. The best form of shredding that I could do on a loot. The medieval version of the final costume. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, there's a panel from fucking Demon Slayer where Zenitsu is shredding it on the shamisen. That's- that's what- I'm just going at it. <laughs> Umir moves towards the center of the ring. Where? Where is my opponent? As Krell starts slowly making her way down the ladder, falling off at about three steps from the bottom, landing flat on her back. As the dust settles around her, you realize that her hair is no longer in front of her face, but it's tied back with a strip of leather. Get him! Oh, crap! She slowly gets up and turns around to face her opponent. Is this some kind of joke? Was this you, Dave? Did you send a little blind girl in here to fight me? The joke is our job. Krell will move up to the sound of this man's booming voice. I was talking shit about Krell! How dare he! The joke is that jaw of yours. So you're seriously to be my opponent, little one? Krell's just standing there, arms crossed, shaking, just like nervously shaking a little bit. As this man is, uh, I think double her height and some change. Almost double her height. <laughs> and could I roll performance for to, Could I roll performance to try and, like, give Krell some confidence in my absolutely ballistic loot playing? <laughs> you can absolutely try. Nat 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you should jam out the most epic loot solo ever heard from a fighter in an attempt to boost Krell's morale and give her the nerve to face off against this opponent she's clearly outmatched for. <laughs> yeah. I'm a great friend and also a father at one point. <laughs> she can she can take this fucking guy. She can take this guy. He got a nat one for his initiative. The music did be kinda going though. I told you I set up new playlists. Yeah. You picked. You I picked did. Heavy McLeod. The bard of, <laughs> of right free music. <laughs> after after getting battle master, I multi class into bard. <laughs> the new uh, this this, this yeah, seems like the kind of campaign where multi classing isn't super viable. It is, but who says the campaign has to end when the module does? That's true, yeah. Could always just go into another. I think there are some 5 to 10s out there. I'd have to look through them, but... Homebrew's always viable. It's true, yeah. Alright, Krell. Also, Whoop this I guy's just, fucking ass. I just realized that the addition... <laughs> Since I'm using the same token, it call, it's counting him as Korag. <laughs> you know what? That's actually gonna bug me. Hold on. Bro, get Korag the fuck out of here. He got smacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Doesn't matter how close the fight was, he's gonna present it as, yeah, I, I, I whooped the shit out of that guy. <laughs> My man really went, the fight's not over yet, asshole, and I turned around and slapped him. <laughs> he had his one shot to, to be a badass and take a swing at me. He fucking missed. And bravado's a hell of a drug. That's true, yeah. Oh, mural. Take a step closer to Krell. Lean down and get right in her face. Tell you what, little girl. I'll even give you the first shot. He'll tap on his metal jaw plate. Oh, fuck him up, Krell. <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> nah, she's gonna crit. Watch this. It'll be great. So. I don't know. More or less, what's happening is Omir is submitting himself to a surprise round, giving Krell advantage. Nice! <laughs> here, here it comes. Nat 20. Krell's gonna drop her hands to her sides with her fists balled up. Look him dead in his face as a big, wide grin of her sharp teeth stretches across it. He was actually a 20th level monk this whole time. <laughs> nope, second level bar. <laughs> we got it. abilities before I do stupid things. Hey, I'll be right back. I gotta go do something real quick. I'll be back in like a minute. Alright. It gives me time to read abilities, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know what both of these fighters are capable of. I borrow money. <laughs> on the bright side, you'd st you're still coming out on top. <laughs> That's true. That's an interesting character to make. Uh, I, uh, a greedy paladin. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to be good, but always see gold in everything. I don't think that goes against your tenants either. That's true, but <laughs> sometimes greed isn't the best sentiment. Tenants is preserving your own light, which you delight in the song, laughter, beauty, and art. And some could say gladiatorial combat's an art form. And by some people, I mean Spoon. Exactly. Spoon is the only man who thinks like Spoon. <laughs> thinks like Spoon. Hopefully he's not referring to the utensil. I mean, an 11 in, uh, 11 in intelligence, he might just be. I also have 11 intelligence. Krell has 10. We are all dumb. Yeah. We're all stupid. <laughs> At least I have 13 wisdom. I do not. Have, I have a ten in wisdom. I wisdom is my lowest. In wisdom. Wow. 
You guys are wiser than the fucking, like, 60-year-old man. That makes you feel better. Krell has an 8 in strength. It does. I have a 20 in strength. And Krell's highest stats are Dex and Charisma, both at 16. I have 15 on Charisma. I, too, have a 15 in Charisma. So, yeah, Krell's got, Krell let this big smile roll up across her face as she's preparing to make her first attack. Although, you see... you. You feel like something's odd. From what you've seen of Krell, it's not in her nature to exactly act cowardly like she was. Or she was possessed by the, the, the witch. Or to blatantly show off her blindness like she did. As you hear whispers through the, cla the crowd that the odds of the fight just went up. By how much? It was five to one against Krell. It is now fifteen to one against Krell. Fuck. <laughs> so if we bet on her, we'd win a lot. I already placed my bets. Unless I already bet a good chunk of money on her five gold pieces. Man. I've got I've got quite a bit of gold to spare though. Unfortunately, since the match has already pieces. started, nah, I can't bet on it. Yeah, because how fair would it be if ten seconds before someone gets choked out, you bet on them? That's true. But I mean, if the odds change, like at the very beginning, I feel like it's a it's a little bit a little sus. In all fairness, <laughs> since Krell didn't know, well, since they didn't mm. know who Krell would be up against, it's basically a straw poll to see who her opponent was. Oh, right. Okay. And going by, going off that this is the former champion. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the odds... That is way cooler than the fucking than the half-orc. Yeah, but you were his opponent, and you're a well-known arena combatant. That's true, yeah. So you had a bit, a little bit of weight to your name. But Pretty against the champ, I got you. yeah, against the champion, your odds weren't in ten to one. Insane. But at the very least, Krell only got fifteen to one odds, and not flat out twenty to one. Yeah, she could take this guy. She's gonna do some dope bard shit. So yeah, Krell's gonna... Job. And Krell taking the uh, first turn as it was offered to her is gonna reel back her fist and drill and let loose a thunderous punch directly into Omir's groin. Yeah! to a resounding cry of ooh from every man in the crowd. Fight dirty <laughs> when the odds are stacked against you. There's no wrong in defending yourself by any means necessary. <laughs> I like that they oh, added the show huh? spell description right there. That's handy. Let's, let's see that constitution save. And the constitution save is just to uh, take half damage and not get knocked back. Yep. But unfortunately, our boy Omir here has a negative one to constitution and rolls a four. He now takes... What was it, 10 thunder damage? Yes, he takes 10 thunder damage. That goes yitting to the... I'm just, I'm fucking like, head And gets knocked back 10 feet and drops to, drops to a knee <laughs> as he holds his grundle. Since this was a self-imposed... <laughs> this was a self-imposed... 
surprise round, Krell gets to go immediately again. Yeah! <laughs> That's Krell. Is that, that even a spell? Oh. Or is it a cantrip? That is a first level spell. Okay. I figured. 2d8 is a lot. But most of the people surrounding would have immediately picked up that that was a spell that just happened. Despite the uh, sound wave that can travel up to 300 feet was kind of dulled out by that resounding Ooh, in a cave oh. from a couple dozen men. <laughs> Although, if and you were... probably from probably from spoons, like proud screeching. Actually, what are your passes? Eleven. And I guess also That's the fact that I am just glaring it on the. Yeah. <laughs> Not very so, good. Neither of you picked up on the resounding sound wave over the cry of the crowd. I'm too concerned with being proud of this elf woman. Elf? Not elf, goblin. <laughs> goblin woman. And fucking playing my loot. <laughs> now you're just still jamming out in the crowd. I didn't bet any money on her. But I know she can win this fight! I bet money on her and know she can win too. Come on, crowd! How does it make you feel that that one attack did about 80% of this man's health and damage? <laughs> so if crowd manages to get a good next hit, he might be done! <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Krell was going to dispatch the former champion quicker than I got rid of the main, of the, the actual champion. Okay, let me see how the other ability works. I gotta assume that, like, if this guy manages to hit her, it's going to be fucking devastating. And she's got, like, 16 health. She can, yeah. She can take it. She started with more health than him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes. <laughs> Only by two points. So, so if she does four damage to him on this turn, he's done. Pretty much, yeah. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> so yeah, Krell's gonna march straight up. Once again, look him dead in the face. Not so big when you're on your knees now, bitch. And she's gonna reel back and give him one straight in his jaw. The solid metal jaw. It's during this punch that you realize her armband is missing from her left bicep and is wrapped around her fist. How, 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 how big is this left bicep? Is it like grotesquely muscular? Krell's or his? Krell's. Well, she's four foot two, so not very, but yeah, most people's bicep is still smaller than the width of their fist. Mm -hmm. So it's basically wrapped around her hand like a set of brass knuckles. Right, okay. And now you know how she just cast magic. <laughs> Yeah. She's she she has the mark of a champion. Unlike the other guy, this girl, she could be a champion. So yeah. She drills in, drills him in his metal jaw with his silver armband wrapped across her fist. And you hear the metal on metal clang reel out. And uh she's gonna cast sleep on it. Oh my yep. god. She's drilling him straight in his jaw. 
<laughs> casting sleep from the resounding metal on metal impact. That's fucking awesome. That's the most creative thing I ever saw. That is fucking. That is brilliant. I had a whole week to figure out how Krell was gonna even remotely win this fight. Well, she just slumped this guy. So she it's... hit him in the dick and then put him to sleep. Yeah. Does, it, does it have a save? Uh, it does not. Oh my god, he just put him to sleep! <laughs> That's fucking so yeah, awesome. It starts with the creature that has the lowest hit points. This man currently has four. The average commoner also has four. But most oh, people God, in this room are miners, street toughs, and fighters. So they'll all have above the average. So this man goes down like a sack of shit. And several people in the crowd faint. <laughs> Talking up to, you know that clip of Tyler One playing fucking Uncharted, and when Drake gets kicked in the fucking face, he passes out. That's uh, what just happened. So yeah, the whole crowd is just uproarious at this upset. See, she's creative. Oh, yeah. She's creative. She's got finesse. I knew she could do it. Oh, girl! <laughs> Boy. What did you- what did you bet on her? I bet the same as you. Five gold. I now, have now, if my math is correct, that's, uh... A good number of gold. <laughs> yes. Good math, it's, uh... There. One, plus one, plus one, plus <laughs> one, plus one. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you may, yeah, you're, you're totally right. He's like counting on his fingers to fucking figure out what the total would be. Um, it's a lot of money, let me tell you. Yeah, as the dust settles and people stop their clamoring, the announcer comes up and like, we, we have a winner. Krell, the blind bandit. As Krell raises her arms yeah. up in victory. Man, oh, yeah. Was, so yeah, this, was fun. this man and everyone in the crowd that got knocked out is gonna be unconscious for a minute. Man. <laughs> because. The player that casts sleep doesn't actually get to pick who's affected and who's not affected. It's just everyone in a 90 foot fucking like square. Uh, 20 feet of the point you choose within 90 oh. feet of you. Gotcha. Starting so from the person with the lowest and it keeps going until it runs out of hit points worth of people to put to sleep. That's, yeah, that's that's grand. So if you center it somewhere where you or your allies are in the circle, you could put yourself or your allies to sleep as there is no save. There is no save. That's fucked. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I imagine there's probably just a lot of things, like immune to that or something. Uh, the undead and creatures immune to being charmed aren't affected. Oh, okay, gotcha. My, my, and I think you also have to speak a common language or something like that. Alright, that makes sense. Uh, nope. They don't even have to understand you. But yeah. If I can dispatch the former champion way faster than I took out the actual champion. <laughs> And for reference, Omir was a second level ranger. Oh. <laughs> he just rolled incredibly poorly on his stats. Which include, oh. an, uh, he's got a 19 in strength, a 14 in wisdom, and those are his only good stats. <laughs> he's got a uh, 4 in charisma, 
Uh, five <laughs> in intelligence, an eight in dexterity, and a nine in constitution. So, if it, if it came to blows, what was his AC? His AC was 13. Fuck it out. Krells is 14. <laughs> this guy would have gotten slapped! <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fighting because of my, I believe it's wrong, but I have a 19 AC. <laughs> Yeah, you would have still a great chance in here. Unless they put you up against, I think, John, son of John. He was the only one that could fight barehanded, I think. Nope. He was the only person Maybe actually Maybe it was Brother Aldrin. Honestly, that's the, the best name ever. John, son of John. I want to you know North Party. I could have sworn one of these guys had an innate unarmed. Oh yeah, it was John son of John, because he has Tavern Brawler. Because he was a human, because he got so he got a feet at first level. Whereas our party is humans, apparently shows stats instead of feats. Because isn't it just like a plus two to a stat and a feat? Uh, you either get uh, plus two to distribute amongst your stats however you choose, or you can trade in that plus two for a feat. Okay. And if you're standard human, you just get plus one to all stats. I believe you're both yeah. varying humans, which get the plus two or the feat. I am a normal human, actually. Oh. I am also a standard human. Mark out. So yeah, this man's gonna be out for a while as Krell starts to ascend the ladder once more. A little more delicately than before. <laughs> as she makes her way back over to the group. Yeah, congratulations, Krell. It just brilliantly made... played. A little deception goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And I just reach her. Let's see how many gold coins I just gained. Ironically, deception is one of the things that Krell isn't proficient in. All right, <laughs> math, math time. But she just, well, I did the math beforehand, so I know exactly what you're good. doing. <laughs> That's good. But with her plus three in charisma, she's got plus four to her deception. I get rid of that character sheet. So yeah, the man that was taking the bets walks over to uh, the group with two very large sacks of coins. He hands, Lovely. He hands the first one to Liss. You quickly count through what's in it, and it comes up to 75 gold pieces. Oh my How many? I didn't quite catch that. 75. Fuck. Off a of 5 gold <laughs> bet in 15 to 1 odds. My god. He then turns to Krell. Congratulations, little one, and hands her the other sack. Just as big. Wait, I beat your champion. Don't I get a reward? You hear a woman's voice call and say from behind you. Of course you do. There was a reward for beating my champion. And as you turn around, Holly Thornton is standing behind you with a rolled up scroll in her hand. <laughs> Brilliant! <Yes. laughs> as winner and new champion, here is your reward. And she hands you the scroll. It's got a very fine silk ribbon 
wrapped around it. And it's on very fine parchment. I'm gonna, Do you I'm want gonna... me to read it to you? Uh, um, <laughs> can I? I think I can read. <laughs> can you? Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, I can read. They wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to read my champion belts if I couldn't read this piece of parchment. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna open it and give it a give it a long look as I read her fancy words. So uh, you unfurl the bit of parchment and you give it a once over and. Give me a... Huh. <laughs> Insight check. Ooh, yeah. I'm great at that. Twelve. Uh, from what you can tell, this is a land deed. I, I look at Holly and I'm like, uh land and the house that sets on it oh <laughs> shit oh you won a house spoon won a house <laughs> we won <laughs> giant sacks of coin <laughs> who's the Brilliant. real winner here probably the people who can buy food and weapons and any other necessary i mean i have money yeah, i'm not saying that you have a couple hundred coins i have 600 copper pieces <laughs> but to be fair that's the party's not mine yeah and that's like six gold <laughs> yeah woo I I have, have, naturally, I've got 47 gold pieces. Yeah, and then you've got 88 silver pieces, which is another 8 gold. Well played. <laughs> and 15 so, gold. So, realistically, you have 60 pieces of gold. Right. <clears throat> you just have to go to the exchange and... What the fuck was that? Weird. <laughs> Miss Thornton, I must thank you for this opportunity. Let, letting me fight as a gladiator once more. I thought it might be a task you were up to. <laughs> but mostly I just wanted to see how skilled you and your little group was. And I must say, I'm impressed. Of course! Oh. I'm Spoon the Eye Gouger! Yeah. If I wasn't skilled, what else would I be? Uh, very hateful man of squirrels and those squirrels are coming. Been not a barbarian. Uh, you are a fighter, so still confused on that. You must have me and my son confused. My son was a barbarian. At least never met your son. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Fully confident that people just know who Whisk is, despite the fact that he died before making it to Phandalin. <laughs> ah. Well, as I was saying, I'm most impressed with the two of you that actually chose to fight. It was more of a testing grounds, if you will. Mm. You see, I do have a task that I believe that the three of you are up to. Do you wish to talk about it here, or perhaps somewhere else? Perhaps it was best talked about in my office. First light tomorrow. Lovely. I'll go There's... see my new home, or my house in Vandalin, more precisely. And we will rest and come see you. Sounds like a plan. As we pack up our well-earned winnings and head back to Fandolin. Did we get our weapons back? Yeah, we collect our weapons and equipment. I assume so, yeah. 
I suppose, since I didn't get a proper belt, this entire house is my belt. You, can... you can't wear a house on your, <laughs> on your wrist. Just yeah, don't try it. But what I can do is carve my name into it. It's true. Where, where is our house, by the way? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, let me find I'm like, the right doodling tool. I'm like staring at this piece of parchment, like trying to figure out where it's located. Please don't tell me this is the. What? No, oh, no. I can, I I can read. All right, trust me. Our house is. God damn it! Where's the thing I wrote this down on? <laughs> Listen, I've got like 15 pages of notes in front of me. Hey man, I totally understand. And I doodle my notes in the margins and then I have to find them. It now this is... is music befitting a champion. I am gonna turn it down a little. There we go. That house right there. Uh, oh, nice. Nice, it's right behind the good old Stonehill Inn. Stop. <laughs> Toolbar, please. I need you to cooperate with me right now. Well, then. Point of game, nothing. Let's stand it. Let's go see the damn thing. Let's go to our house. I, yeah. I keep saying ours, the uh, yard. I mean, you got you watched me fight. It's all reward. I, I mean, assuming the size is befitting of three, two and a half people. Probably. I, I wonder how it is inside. We would have furniture, spiders, scorpions, oh, squirrels. Squirrels! <laughs> oh, it's possible there's a little a tree nearby. A squirrel gets in this house, I'll break its neck. Hopefully we won't have any squirrels. Trying to find a car that doesn't look like shit against this background. <laughs> <laughs> Bees? Imagine if there was someone bad inside. If there's someone bad in there, we're more than equipped to take care of it. No, no, dead. Oh, dead. That's why, that, again, ghost! <laughs> I'm more than confident I could beat a ghost in a fist fight. <laughs> A ghost can't be touched. My friend, will and determination can leave can lead the way to anything. That's true. I'm pretty sure specters can't be harmed by bludgeoning, slashing, or piercing damage, but okay. Then I'll get some fucking magical gauntlets. <laughs> Fair point. If a ghost appears, I will have to do is that was my assuming assuming magic bludgeoning can harm a specter. <laughs> usually. Usually you add magic to something and it starts hitting things. Yeah. <laughs> Unless that thing absorbs <laughs> magic, then you're in trouble. So yeah, we make <laughs> our way to the rough destination of where our ho where Spoon's house is supposed to be, and we come up on a somewhat dilapidated house. The walls are broken and crumbling a bit. It seems like this house hasn't been used for a while. But you know what isn't broken on this house? <laughs> the door. 
No. <laughs> the fantastic dwarven stonework floor. <laughs> 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 well, if there's anything to be happy, we can always pay someone to fix it. So oh, it's not a home yet, but uh... I mean, you can sleep in it if you're not worried about the wildlife. And the only thing I care about coming into this place is squirrel. For all oh, intents... I slept it for about two years traveling, so I don't have any problems. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, this house is little more than four walls and a roof. Is that right? Pretty much. Well, let's see inside. Maybe there is some furniture? I Hopefully. doubt it, but hey. Right. A, some hope is always nice. Uh, is, since it's abandoned, can, can I use my divine sense before entering? Uh, yep. Okay, I just have to... I don't have to do anything, right? Just... Take one now. Pretty much, yeah. So as you tap into your divine senses, casting your holy gaze upon this house, it doesn't seem desecrated in any way, and there are no fey, celestial, or undead creatures anywhere near you. Oh, thank God. So, that means no ghosts, right? Yes. Great! And he's just gonna barge in. <laughs> I mean, you can believe there's no ghosts in here, but ghosts aren't considered undead. <laughs> that's Spoon what they are. Probably. But Spoon is no that's, legible that's, that that's, that's a, a probably or a maybe is just as good as an absolute yes to Spoon. Oh, correction, ghosts are undead. But yeah, there's no oh. ghosts here. <laughs> As you storm into your new abode, uh, you find a couple of uh, shelves and a table with a bit of a uh, limp to it as it's kind of tilted a little bit sideways, having one leg slightly shorter than the others. A couple salvageable chairs. Uh, the fireplace seems to be in working order, but other than that, there's very little furniture other than a bit of hay strewn on the floor. Uh, the the shelves are. Do you have anything on them? Uh, make an investigation check. Can I do the same? Sure. Nat twenty. Let's go. Uh, you find a couple of well-weathered books that seem like they would disintegrate at the slightest touch. Uh, the odd vial or glass with a little bit of chipping to it, but nothing too damaged as to not be usable. Boy, this place is a mess. <laughs> and it has a serviceable cooking spit. Lovely. We can make sure. Uh, the campfire works. The campfire. The... There's no beds, but I have a bedroll, so I'm not worried about that. Yes, I also have a bedroll. I think I have. Oh, it, oh no. I, I don't have a bedroll. I have a bedroll. I do not have a bedroll. Or maybe I do, maybe it's in a pack. Is there a bedroll in a Dungeoneer's pack? I think so. Alright, well then, I have a bedroll. 
I'm not quite sure what's in a Dungeoneer's pack. We could get some things to cook some food, maybe a soup. Oh, yes. Perhaps. Perhaps the local provision store has something we can make food with. Uh, the Dungeoneer's pack contains everything in your inventory list from backpack to hemp and rope. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, as a matter of fact, do not have a bedroll. Oh. That's fine, there's hay on the ground, I could sleep on that. You could buy a bedroll, since you just earned the house, you know, and you probably have some money. Yeah, assuming... What, 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 what's the time of day looking like? Is it like late? Uh, it was already dark when we went to the fights, and it's been a couple yeah, of hours. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. The pr provision store probably isn't open. That's probably a good call. We are, in a, we are in a small city. There's probably some wildlife up there. Frogs, uh, a rabbit, a squirrel. <laughs> oh, yeah. the table, are you supposed to be protecting nature? <laughs> Yes, I am, but, uh, you haven't uh, taken that off yet. Yeah. <laughs> man has to eat. No, uh, eating controls the balance of the nature. If I just kill for fun, that's wrong. If I kill for feeding myself. Well, I'll go hunt some food. Comes okay, back half an hour later with a sack full of dead squirrels. <laughs> Let me tell you, there are a lot of squirrels in Fandalin. <laughs> okay then, let's make some... Uh, I don't know any plates with squirrels, there's... Yeah, let's just buy them. So yeah, he pours oh, out his sack of dead squirrels on the table. You start going through them. Uh, two of them are quite obviously cats. <laughs> I, I don't want to eat the cats. What? Oh, oh god, there are cats in there! I thought those were just really weird. It's not squirrels, Ted. There's only normal squirrels here, very small ones. What no, happened in the no. future? I swear. I, just, oh, I I swear to God, they were wide. There's no collars on these animals. I'm not a bad person. I'm just dumb. <laughs> okay, but... Uh, it was dark out. He doesn't have night vision and a million other excuses. <laughs> I, I right, I'm telling you, right you. size, curled tail... I a million reasons that I could tell you that it was perfectly fine for me to shoot these cats with crossbow. Okay, uh, bury these cats in the garden while I make the soup, please. Okay! So while he's out back digging cat graves... I'm real sorry about this, fellas. I, um... um... Please do not curse me or my bloodline, we've already had a bad enough time. What bloodline? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That was cruel. No, he could have he could have had he could have had bastards somewhere along the way. Which like you have, you have, have specifically three. said your only sign about four times. To his knowledge. <laughs> Fair. He was a gladiator to imagine how many women must have left with him. Uh well, considering it was pretty common to give gladiators whores after a victory. <laughs> there you go. There's probably a son of mine somewhere out there. Foreshadowing. Question. <laughs> There's like eight storylines for Spoon that need to be closed at some point. <laughs> I just keep opening them. I'm sorry. 
I ain't nothing wrong, man. They just lets me build arcs <laughs> off in the distant future. I keep opening door after door. <laughs> the best part is I went to find a place to be. But yeah, as he's out back burying the cats and hoping he doesn't get cursed, I'm gonna have him roll a religion check. And oh, <laughs> I'm gonna have yeah. Liz roll a survival <laughs> check to cook these squirrels. A religion check, huh? Bro, I'm so good at that. <laughs> Two. <laughs> uh, well, Liz can make a serviceable meal from the squirrels, not really knowing their anatomy. He picks out the parts that he thinks will be good and boils them into a stew. And, uh... Spoon believes he's done everything you're supposed to do in performing funeral rites. <laughs> I've actually, ju I've actually just put, I, I put them on top of on top of dirt mounds without burying them. <laughs> That's the welcome first night on the new house. <laughs> I wonder if there are any cat spirits I can exploit. <laughs> I Lovely. Did you did you include the livers? <laughs> Let me uh, tell you, squirrel livers, brilliant. That's a lot of that's a lot of depth to the meal. Probably. Uh, <laughs> I put a lot of things on this. I don't know. I never cooked squirrels before. Um, if you heat their bones just right. You can add the marrow to an absolutely brilliant soup, let me tell you. Uh, uh Liz, roll me bones? a medicine yeah. check to see if you even know what a squirrel liver looks like. Come on, I have <laughs> It's not bad. You got a general idea of what guts would be good and bad. But... Nowhere near the uh, expertise Spoon would have at his 40-something years of squirrel hunting. Ah. Uh, that is, this really feels homely now. <laughs> A broken down house. No furniture. Killing squirrels. And the occasional Ooh. house pet. Uh... I, I, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, some. I was Were lovely. you supposed to be wealthy after a lifetime my, of living? Uh, initially, my house is very lovely. She's friends with some brilliant dwarven carpenters. Let me tell you, if we ever go to Squirrelstead, you will see the the, the Spoon Estate. It's beautiful. It's actually not called that. It's under my wife's name, but I call it that to make myself feel better. I see. How is your wife? Um, good. I assume she hasn't written back uh, ever since I sent to Tawn and her a letter. Uh, it's only been what him. a day since you sent that letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no conception of how long these things take. Um, I assume there will be a letter. My wife has always been pretty consistent on that front. The Tawn probably won't send anything. She, she has a lot of work on her chest. I mean, the purse, the, the children, the orphanage. She's got a lot. I don't imagine she'll send a letter, but I know she'll grieve. Whisk was a dear friend. Probably. Uh. So. That's it, in memory of Whisk. Yes. To my, to my brilliant son, who is probably up there, and uh, wherever he may have gone, possibly um, enjoying a lovely mug of ale. You know what? He is fighting with the gods at this moment. <laughs> You're, you what? So hold on, let me roll on that one real quick. <laughs> Boy, he's actually exploring the the nine hells. Alright, alright. What? 
By the way, you can roll a logical dice on here, and it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like, like a D3. How is it D3? <laughs> One. He's probably enjoying it. Oh hey. my god, this is so nice weird. Of ale. Who knows? I don't... My son wasn't a bad person, so I imagine he... He's probably feasting with the gods at this moment. Ah, that would be brilliant. Noble warriors are called to various realms. Hopefully someday I will meet with my god himself. Noble. I don't think he was a noble warrior. <laughs> he was a warrior, and a damn fine one, but a noble one... I don't know about that. Well, if you, even if you, if she was a mighty warrior, then... Yes, mighty is the better word. And he's probably with the god of war or something. Sharing a, a drink, having a, 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 a bed or a spare. Who knows? Maybe I'll know once I kick the bucket. That's true. Hopefully not soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just had a rather sad realization that I am in fact way past my youth. How many years do you have now? Fifty... Uh... I'm 53 as of now. 53. Yes. To have my whole life ahead, I only 22. And if I'm correct, uh, an average human lives uh, about 45 years. So if anything, I've out ex I've outlived my own life expectancy. That's just fucking wrong. <laughs> Think about what I just said is wrong. <laughs> yep. Probably not. It's a medieval society. I'm actually looking it up. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, but in D and D, the average human expectancy is about like eighty to a hundred years, I think. Yeah, probably because they have magic. Uh, probably be. Oh, it isn't specific. It just says lives less than a century. Ouch. <laughs> Meanwhile, elves can casually live to 400. <laughs> well, it's a shame we don't have some AO. Enjoy this, too. Right? They should sell that thing in, in bottles. They, they, they sell you in bottles. What? Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Don't break my poor heart. What the hell did I just they, miss? They... I was not paying attention. I was reading. Uh, I, I said they should sell ale in bottles, and List replied, "They do." Well, to taverns they sell in barrels, but uh, if you went to a, a liquor shop, they probably sell in a few bottles. This is no one tell this so you, man. You're about telling the, the truth, right? You what just said. <laughs> no one tell this man about wine. <laughs> Are you telling me they sell ale in bottles at provisionaries? Yeah, yes, probably. Holy shit. <laughs> How much money do I have? He's like rifling through his coin purse. <laughs> gonna pull a grog and just carry around a cask of ale the whole campaign? <laughs> Maybe! No, Maurice can carry that. But yeah, I'm sitting here reading. 
the various informations about humans, and apparently in addition to your comment and your one language of choice, you're also fond of sprinkling your speech with words borrowed from other tongues, such as curses in, in Orcish, musical expressions in Elvish, and Dwarvish military phrases. What the fuck? I know how to speak common, Dwarvish, Elvish, and Orc. I speak common and Dwarvish, and that is it. Yeah, Krell's got Goblin in common. <laughs> well then, we've got business at first light. So perhaps, considering Krell, I believe you expanded a bit of your, your magical prowess back there. And let me tell you, did that guy beat the shit out of him? <laughs> Uh, I did not catch the end of that. Uh, just that—that that was it. <laughs> no, I didn't hear boy, what you said after magical prowess. I said, and boy, did that guy beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Let's go to bed. And he just fucking falls backwards on the on the like a preset hay pillow he had already built up. I set my bedroll and tried to get some sleep. I'm probably going to use my backpack as my, my pillow. Remember to have Krell back her spell slots for the morning. I get back my, my action surge and my second wind. I get back my divine senses. I had to use both of those to beat fucking Korag. What a shame. Krell used two out of her three first level spell slots. Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah, what great warriors we. And. Be a long rest, so you're back in full health. Still got some chunks of flesh missing now. But I guess that's... also a broke and also a broken nose. Yeah. Let's not forget about that. A very, very concave nose. You should probably see someone about that. <laughs> Well, well, am I gonna go to a doctor? What's the what's the healthcare like in Vandalin? <laughs> Not very good, but uh, unfortunately, you happen to be bunking up with someone that actually knows the cure wound spell. Lovely. Yes, that's true. I also have a high proficiency in medicine. That also. Ooh, but yeah, magic is in the here and now, but do you want to burn that spell slot first thing in the morning? <laughs> do you want to try and pull my fucking nose back into place? I, I mean, have, much, I mean, I don't. I would prefer not to have that spell slot be burned. Me too. So first thing in the morning, put the nose back in. Right, give me that medicine check. You managed to uh, realign the cartilage and bone shards somewhat the way you remember them, but his nose is now just the slightest bit crooked to the left. Whatever, it's fine. I think it's okay. It'll definitely take some time to heal, so I wouldn't recommend getting punched in the face again. I won't. <laughs> and if I do, well, that's just the life of a gladiator. Something oh, tells me to find ever... a way to get hit in the face by the end of the day. I'll just trip over my own two feet and fall <laughs> fucking face first into the ground. <laughs> Somehow walks into the one lamp post in town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
by the do we wake up by a mob of angry villagers because we just murdered two cats? Probably. They were probably wild cats. They weren't collars, so if anything, it's the owner's fault. Okay. If they uh, were owned animals. It doesn't seem to have been realized that these cats are missing from the best you can tell. Great. Well then, let's go. Let's go talk to Miss Thorpe. All right. Go then. Is there a lock on the door or something? Oh, there is no. <laughs> I can almost imagine there isn't. <laughs> so you only back. there's nothing. Okay. You give Crow a handful of. Uh, I think I maybe a one or. I think one level and Crow might have a spell that could do that. I can't remember if it's a second or third level spell that I'm thinking of. The only but, uh, spell about locks that I can think of is knock, but that just breaks locks. Yeah, that just pops locks open, but there's a couple spells that also... There's also arcane lock, which is basically just a magical lock that can't be broken. <laughs> well, shit. And then there's another spell, which isn't quite a lock, but it's also quite the deterrent to not open a door you're not supposed to. Yeah, what, what, what makes it what makes it a deterrent? Yeah, it is a third level spell. Uh, it takes an hour to cast, though. And uh, it's okay. kind of expensive. Really? But, uh, what, are the, what are the components? Uh, incense and powdered diamond worth at least 200 gold pieces, which the spell consumes. I make a lock? Uh, oh, wow. You can, inscribe, that is... you can inscribe a glyph that harms other creatures either upon a surface, such as a table or a section of floor or wall, or within an object that can be closed, such as a book, scroll, or a treasure chest. Uh, you choose a That's... surface, it can cover an area no larger than 10 feet in diameter. If you choose an object, that object must remain in place. If the object has moved more than 10 feet from where you cast a spell, the glyph is broken. And the spell ends without being triggered. It's nearly invisible and requires a successful intelligence check against your spell save DC to be found. You decide what happens, decide what triggers the glyph when you cast the spell. For glyphs inscribed on a surface, the most typical triggers include touching or standing on the glyph, removing another object covering the glyph, approaching within a certain distance of the glyph, or manipulating the object on which the glyph is inscribed. For glyphs inscribed in an object, the most common triggers including open an object, approaching within a certain distance of the object, or seeing or reading the glyph. Once a glyph is triggered, the spell ends. You can further refine the triggers. The spell activates only under certain circumstances or according to physical characteristics such as height or weight. Creature kind. So, how much damage does or it Or alignment. Mean? And you can also set the conditions for creatures that don't trigger the glyph, such as those who say a certain password. Uh, okay. When you inscribe the glyph, you can choose Explosive Rune or Seal Glyph. An Explosive Rune detonates in a 20-foot radius sphere that spreads around corners, and you make a deck save against Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder for 5d8 damage of that type. Okay, all right, yeah, that's that's worth it. Or you could store a spell up to the level you use to cast this spell to unseal that spell in the glyph. So, uh, sure. imagine casting... It's Glyph of Warding, by the way. Glyph of Warding, right. Or we could just carve, carve spoon the guy gouging in the front of the, the door, and don't think anyone is going to enter there. It'll intimidate anyone who tries to. So if you because I will track them the fuck down. So if you happen to be a particularly assholeish uh, bard, blood hunter, fighter, rogue, sorcerer, warlock, or wizard, they could cast ninth level spells. You could inscribe power word kill into your glyph of warding, 
and uh, whatever creature happens to trigger it, if they have less than 100 hit points, they die instantly. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and you can set that... multiple glyphs of warding. And they're there permanently until detonated. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you can set up like two, three explosive me... ones and then a power word kill one at the end. That costs nearly as much as... For about a thousand gold worth of diamonds, you could kill just about anything that isn't immune to the damage type that you chose. Yeah. <laughs> Put several of them and each one a different element. Your house may be gone, but hey, you defended it. <laughs> really depends on what type of damage you choose. I feel, like, I feel like, I guess the only one that could maybe be an exception is cold. Well, you flash freeze your house, but yeah. And that'll thaw eventually. <laughs> but anyway, enough about exploding runes. Uh, we make our way to Helia's home and office down here just behind the Miner's Exchange. I knew that. <laughs> you didn't know that because I only just revealed the name. <laughs> nah, nah, I knew. So, it's maybe an hour after daybreak, a reasonable hour that someone would be awake when we arrive at her home. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll up and knock on the door. A few moments later, Halia enter, opens the door. Not quite in her, uh, formal dress like she was wearing yesterday but in more of a uh, evening gown like something you'd wear to bed greetings miss thornton uh yes welcome to be honest i didn't here, think you'd show up but here you are here at first light just like you said ah uh, yes come in come in as she gestures her arm into the room. I will gladly walk in. A prideful new champion. He's probably wearing like a like a bit of squirrel leather made to look <laughs> like a belt. As he did not probably. actually receive one. <laughs> He's probably like, has like scratched a big S into like a, a squirrel pouch of his. SCP <laughs> Spoon Champion of Phandalin. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> so yeah, we settle into the room and make ourselves cozy. Uh, tea, anybody? Uh, I accept some tea. Sure. She'll pour you out a glass and pass the cream and sugar along. And Krell will take a cup of tea as well. I will respectfully pass up these white additives. <laughs> no sugar and put, cream uh, for spoon, then. I will put an uh, unnatural amount of sugar on my tea. 
I like sweet things and on the coven they forbid sugar because it was too tempting. They forbid sugar? They forbid sugar. I never tasted a sweet in 20 years of my life. Why? <laughs> People have little... fought wars over sugar. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they fought wars over religion too. <laughs> you make a very good point. Was both. People fight wars over damn near anything. There, there was a lot of the bucket. Brilliant. People fought over a stolen bucket. I mean, of course, if somebody steals your shit, you fight them for it. But that bucket, a war. I mean, it checks out. I forgot the name of the city. It checks out to me, honestly. So yeah, Krell just immediately starts sipping her tea, even though it's basically boiling. Well, I'm not going to let her show me up. <laughs> Fresh out of the pot, off the stove tea. Yeah, I'll just fucking drink that shit. Uh, make me a constitution save. Now you're, you're gladly. 13. That's done. So yeah, I torches our mouth a little bit, but not enough to really do serious harm. I will normally drink, uh, sip my incredibly sweet tea. Yeah, you've sweetened yours down enough that most of the heat's been taken away from the actual liquid and... <laughs> it's almost got a crunchy texture. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> You're not sure if there's more sugar or more tea leaves in this cup at this point. But, uh, it's a nice Earl Grey tea of a decent caliber, good renown. Basically a brand name tea mm, in the modern right. equivalent. Mm, so, miss. Thornton, what have, uh, what have you brought us here to discuss? Well, as I told you before, the red brands are a major problem both to myself and the people of this city. Okay. And I've come to know where they tend to hang out. It's the, uh, Sleeping Giant Tap House, just opposite of the house you won last night. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. House needs to be touched up. But we've got the money for it. It has been vacant for several seasons now. Yes, we can, we can fix it up. It'll be great. And in, addition, no. and in addition no, to finding out where they hang out, we've also discovered where their base of operations is. Lovely. Where might that be? Uh, at the far east of town in the Trezendar Manor. Hmm. In, in old estate, now in critical disrepair. We've seen them come and go, but can't seem to figure out how they get in or out of their hidden base. It's hidden? You would think a manor would be a rather hard thing. To, well, it's with, if their base is within the manor. Probably a secret exit, a trapdoor, maybe. Mm. And it's perhaps their base is under the manor. That's what my men have surmised, but 
even going there and looking around under cover of night, they never seem to be able to find where it is. Well, the ones on the sleeping giant probably know it. Yes, that is most likely. And that's why I'd like to offer you 100 gold pieces to find your way into the manor and eliminate their leader called Glassstaff and bring back any correspondence you find within his quarters. Sure, yes, we could see that done. If they are pestering the citizens, then yes, I also will do it. Well, I mean, they're a gang. Thieves, murder, likely other heinous crimes, I'm sure they will, they, they, they deserve it. Yes, let's deal with it then. <laughs> Good, so we have a deal then. Yes. Yes, you yeah. have a deal. Uh, she holds out her hand for which to shake. I, my big, meaty hand will reach out to her for me to shake it. Uh, it's a surprisingly firm shake, and her hands are just the slightest bit clammy. I will take her hand and give a gentleman gentleman kiss. Gentleman, I can't speak gentleman. <laughs> well then. All right. I should probably make it so you can actually see my behind the screen rolls being rolled. I suppose task number one is to either listen in or beat some information out of the boys that hang out at the giant. And let me tell you, beating them is a lot easier. Uh, yeah, yes. Well, let's let's go then. We could probably tie to Intuit Mate then to the to Oh, I've got a booming voice, my friend. I imagine I could then we don't need to kill anyone. Yeah. Okay, let's forcefully for, uh, turn them in to the law. Uh, I don't know. Gang gangs of this kind. If they ma if they happen to have kind of, you know, uh, will to blatantly attack the economy, then um, perhaps there is some sort of entanglement with the law. I've seen my fair share of dirty guards in my time. Well, that's a moral debate. I mean, we've got plenty of rope, we could just tie them up. Or at least I've got some, no, I've got plenty of rope. Yeah, we could do that. Tie them up in the middle of town, the farmers decide what to do with them. That would be nice. Yeah, and everyone knows that wounds made from our pitchfork can't be stitched. It's Don't cool. ask why I know that. Because they're fucking, because they're fucking round. Yeah, it's a very hard wound to stitch. The same with bayonet wounds. Yeah, well, depends on the bayonet. If it's a triangular yeah. bayonet, it can't be stitched. But anyway, we all seem to be in agreement that the Sleeping Giant is our next place of interest to visit. Yes. Yes. Right, so head over yonder. Only a couple of houses behind the, the Stone Hill Inn. How strange. 
Uh, the Sleeping Giant is a ramshackle tap room. Uh, it's very dirty and not very well maintained, but just enough to be still an active business. Four human ruffians linger on the covered porch, perched on empty ale barrels or leaning against the wall. They all wear grimy scarlet cloaks. Their su sullen stares fixed on you as approached. As you near the door, one of the thugs spits on the ground. Well, well. Here's a whole pack of little puppies. What do you want, puppies? Come here to bark at us? Um, excuse you. We've just come to drink. Well, well then. By all means. He gestures towards the door. Yes. After, after becoming Fandolin's, uh, a big name in Fandolin... I decided to take my friends out uh, the next morning. Is that a problem, gentlemen? As long as you keep it civil, you've nothing to worry about. Spits and Lovely. Thugs. Lovely. And I will barge my way. As you walk inside you see a few more gentlemen seated and having drinks all of them look like men and women of ill repute and behind the bar is a surly looking female dwarf I will uh, simply approach the bar and sit and wait to be um, hailed. I'll uh, sit right next to him. After serving her regulars that were already seated, she walks over to you, spits directly on the ground. What'll you have? Um, do you carry dwarven ale? You're joking, right? No. Of course we've dwarven ale. Well then there you go. I would like a pint of dwarven ale. She'll reach up and grab a bottle off one of the shelves behind her. The bottle didn't even have a cork in it or anything. It was just left sitting open as she pours it into a cup and slams it down on the counter in front of you. Two gold Does it pieces. Does it look the same as most other dwarf nails I've had? Uh, roll investigation. I will. I'm so good at investigation. <laughs> Ten. As far as you can tell, it's no different. Two gold pieces. Right you are, madam. And I will set her two gold pieces right on the, uh, right on the, uh, the the bar. As you reach into your various pouches to pull your coins out, it uh, seems to draw the attention of quite a few people in the establishment. <clears throat> uh, yes. Seems like a Lovely little place you've got here. I'm sure you only get, what, one, maybe two rats every other day? Brilliant. My kind of bar, honestly. Rats make for good stew. I'm more of a squirrel man, personally. I can tell. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to go for, like... 40 year long smoker with this voice that's just not coming out right. Let me tell you, let me tell you something, darling. There you go. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going for, just couldn't hit it. I, I totally feel you there, man. It happens all the time. 
<clears throat> as I'm as I'm uh, sipping my my ale, I'm just asking remediary questions. Business been good lately. This place does. I imagine your your boys out front managed to scare a bunch of people off. What with their rude greetings. Eh, it's usually just the regulars that come in. Most other folks drink at the inn. Hmm. Yes, the inn is quite nice. Uh. Are you implying that are... my place isn't? Well, I mean, kind of looks around a bit. It's all right. I'm drinking war shittles, that's for sure. One time, one time, a bar in uh, Squirrelstead had a massive um, squirrel tending the bar. I had to assume it was a druid, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to talk to me like that. She nods to one of the gentlemen near the door who casually sets his hand on the hilt of his sword. It is a nice day. Are you familiar with uh, the Colosseum in uh, in the Phandalin Mines? Just yesterday, I became the champion of said ma of said Colosseum. It was quite the spectacle. Is that so? Roll intimidation yes! with advantage. Mm. Can I roll persuasion to see if I saw the guy putting the. 19. Hand on his hilt? Uh, that'd be perception, but yes. Perception, yeah. Persuasion. <laughs> so yeah, you definitely okay. saw that guy gripping his the hilt of his sword. As you're okay, I, generally I, I taking I down sights around the room. I'm going to do pretty much the same. Put, just slightly put my hand like... That's a normal thing. So, you're the new champion then. La de fucking da. You want a goddamn cookie? No! I actually just wanted a drink! But apparently, a good drink was too fucking much to ask for. Your drink's there in front of you. You haven't even touched it yet. Well, you must be blind, little lady. I've been sipping it casually. Unfortunately, it's practically worse than a pint of rat's piss. So, I feel as though my newly earned wealth is wasted. Uh, roll a constitution save. Gladly. <laughs> Eleven. So yeah, you realize that this drink is deceptive in its flavoring. While it seems to go down a lot easier than other dwarven ales, it packs twice the punch. As the world <laughs> starts to get a bit fuzzy around you. <clears throat> a shame. Can't even, can't even have a simple and peaceful nice day after such a big win. And as... Ah... Uh, Liss is still casually surveying the room. Two of the men from out front, including the one he saw, put his hand on his sword, walk up. And the bigger of the two spits on the ground. Time for you to move on, strangers. Give us your stuff and be on your way. I am going to... <laughs> Are these are these are these bar stools like bolted to the ground or nailed? <laughs> Not in any fashion you can surmise. And I'm gonna stand up and look at this guy, and fucking whip my hand behind me and fucking hit him with the bar stool. Uh, roll the hit. <laughs> what would I roll for that? Just a straight d20. Yeah. Because you're not proficient in. In bar stool. <laughs> Seventeen. Alright. Well, 
Well, give me a minute while I set this up. <laughs> I mean, if the 17 doesn't hit this guy, I'm gonna be a little sad. If it was me, it wouldn't hit. Well, you're not, you're not exactly just some random gang thug, are you? That's true. I'm a paladin. You're a paladin. I can't wait to see the guys trying to attack me. The sword just sticks in my armor. That's all you got, boy. Ratchety. I'm just waiting. I think I'm going to hit the guy on the other guy with the, my shield. Just bash his face. I've just conked a man with a bar stool. Assumedly, if a 17 doesn't hit, I'm gonna be a little upset. There's a jazz playing, and the only thing I could, could think is Cowboy Bebop. Oh, 
All right, so you swing your chair, your bar stool directly at this man's head. Uh, it hits. Roll me one d four. Boom. <laughs> I want to attack the guy right next to him with my just bash with my okay. shield on his face. Uh, just one sure. moment as we are basically Spoon got a surprise right on this guy blitzing him with a bar stool. Yeah. And now everyone else gets to roll initiative. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Oh, is that a nice? Let's go. Got yeah, a four. Have... Four. Oh wait, was it initiative with advantage? Did I, did I miss that? Uh, you only get advantage on initiative if you have an ability that gets you do so. Which gotcha, I okay. don't believe you have access to. Nope. Alright, so Krell's first. Yeah, am, I, am I seriously going last? I'm not! There's one guy slower than me! Let's go! <laughs> you start the fight. You almost got lowest billing. Hold on. The one guy saw you isn't even in the room. <laughs> I mean, I'm a bit drunk, and I just fucking... I'm so proud of myself for decking that guy in the skull with a fucking chair. Uh, Krell's gonna pick up your half-full mug of... Dwarven Ale and come over and uh, attempt to throw it in this man's face. Which will miss. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to be disadvantaged. Still misses. Oh, fuck. So basically, you just spit her out. You just slap this man in the face, and Krell just grabs your beer, goes to throw it at this guy, completely fucking missing. Yes, sir. Guy over here is gonna move ten feet forward and try and catch you in the gut with a short sword. That's a nat 20. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> For seven points piercing damage. Nothing. Not even that bad. <clears throat> Unfortunately, these gentlemen have multi-attack and get to make two attacks around as he attempts to bring you through a second time. 15 hit? No. Also, that was a nat 20 on the other side of the die. Fuck me. Uh, what's this up? Okay, hey, you're going to attack this guy right in front of me with my long swords on him. Uh, 24 will hit. For 6 points slashing. 6 points. Should've. So, yeah, oh no. Just... Spin around, already having your sword on your hilt, or your hand on your sword hilt, and you just slash diagonally in one fluid motion across this man's chest as he moves up behind you. Uh, uh, the gentleman oh, one by the door outside. is going to make his way inside and up the list. And attempt to run him through with a short sword. 15 will not hit. Having missed, he'll 
bring the sword back sideways, hoping for a slash with a seven that also misses. Boy in front of Spoon, who just caught a stool to the face, is gonna pull his sword out of the sheath and attempt to make a backhanded attack, which will miss. And then he'll just go for like a straight lunge, straight at your chest, which will also miss. Curly disoriented from the stool to the face as we move to Spoon's turn. Yeah, um, the guy, I'm going to just take a great sword slash at the guy in front of me. All right, roll Boom. one. I yeah. got 20 hits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, eat oh. shit. <laughs> so that's uh, 21 points damage. <laughs> yes, you, it is. As you draw your greatsword straight off your back and just bring it down on this man's collarbone, just leaving a foot-deep gash diagonally across his torso, nearly splitting him in half. As his body sinks to the floor. God damn. See, I warned you! I warned you and look what happened! You would have killed that man if he was at full health. <laughs> My stool was just for showmanship. As the last of the boys runs inside. Fifth boy. <laughs> Eager the boys. to run you through. A 20 will hit. Yeah, it will. Dealing another five piercing damage. Not even phased. <laughs> A little bit phased. <laughs> and then just as he brings his sword back from the slash, he'll try and pop you in the face with the pommel. And completely miss. As we move to Krell. Krell's gonna move along behind the nearly bisected man. And she's going to slash at this boy's back with her cutlass, which will miss. Uh, the boy just below Spoon will make two more attacks, both of which land. Fuck me. Doing a total of 16 points damage and yep, I'm, I'm done. crumpling him to the floor. And this is up. Okay, uh, how do I cast Thunderous Might? Uh, you make a regular attack uh, roll. Normal. It, normal is might. Yeah, you make your you make a regular attack roll with a melee weapon. If it hits, you do the damage, and then you click on Thunderous Smite to do the damage for that as well. Okay, so I don't hit. Yeah, an 8 will not oh. hit. <laughs> uh oh. Now we're, now we're in trouble. Uh, boy just below the list. Gonna make those two attacks. Both of which completely miss his heavy armor. Dead people don't get turns, so Spoon gets to make a death save. And that is a fail, unfortunately. If I guess kill don't wounds on him on my next round, does he goes back up? Uh, if you cast your wounds on him and he heals more damage than to get him to zero or above it, he comes back. Okay. Uh. But luckily for you, Krell has bonus action healing. 
as she casts Healing Word to heal Spoon for five points damage. Bringing me up to negative three. It's better than negative eight. That <laughs> is you, true. If you were to, for whatever reason, hit negative 20, you'd be dead out. I would have died <laughs> instantly. <laughs> And since that was a bonus action, she still gets to use her regular action to make another cutlass attack on the land in front of her. Also missing. Uh, uh. Apparently, she put all her effort into the fight last night. As the man she just tried to stab spins around and gives her two short sword stabs. One hitting and one nat wanting. So Krell Woo! will take... Six piercing damage as she gets shivved by this man's short sword. And let's see what a nat one earns him. Seven. So yeah, as he goes in for the second lunge. Krell parries it and buries his sword into the floorboards. And Ellie. he'll have to make a strength save to remove it as a bonus action. Uh, which he will fail. Hell yeah. So for the moment, his sword's buried in the floorboards. Oh, I forgot to advance the turns. Oh, whoops. So I did attacks out of order. So yeah, it's Lissa's turn. Okay. And I'm going to cast Kiri Wounds on, on Spoon. Wow. Just that was bad. Just Zero. enough to bring you back to the land of life. I can't get up, but yeah. I am stabilized. Yeah, you're still unconscious, uh, but you're not dying anymore. Go ahead and track off that failure so I'm not worried about. As the boy directly was, below you was, was... goes for another double shiv. Ooh, a 19 will hit you. Yep, that matches so wow. yes. As Liss takes five points piercing damage as he finds the one part of your armor to wedge that sword into. Nine hit points. What can I even do with zero hit points? I can't imagine I can use a second wind, can I? I have to be conscious to do that? You are conscious. I, oh, I thought you said I was still unconscious. You're, like, right on that teetering point where you're just so coming I, back to consciousness. So I can yeah. use a second wind is what I'm hearing. Yes, Ooh, you can. Hell yeah. Uh, that would be 1d12, or 1d10 plus 2. Ten. That's ten points healing. Get you back to half and that's, health. And that's a bonus action, so I can then get up and make an attack. Yep, and use half your movement to get up as you prepare yourself to avenge yourself, basically. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to back off to... You said it was half my movement, yeah. right? Yeah, so you still have 15 feet of movement. Three. That's 15, I think. And you will now suffer two attacks. Oh fuck! That's right. They get attack. They get attacks of opportunity. I just left two people's attack rate. I'm done. Both of them miss. <laughs> and I'm going to shoot my crossbow at this boy right here. That hits. I guess it does. Eleven piercing. So yeah, this boy over here is just giving you the business, having put you down 
and it was almost sort of celebrating as you get back up and he goes to swing at you along with his companion, both missing, and you kind of dodge back out of the roll, out of the way, doing sort of like a shoulder roll, pulling your crossbow off your hip in the same movement, just quick draw shoot, and catch him right in the neck. And there's a spray of blood later, he hits the floor. I'm now going to use my action surge to make an attack on his boy right there. Assuming I, I, can, I can do that, right? Yeah, he's within your range. Cool. That doesn't hit. That is a nat one. I finally get to bust out Wait. the ranged, bro the ranged so, nat one table. Now, hold on. Does a crossbow count as a two-handed weapon? A uh, light crossbow, I believe, is one. But I have to check that. Yeah. Yeah, because if because I can re-roll ones with on two-handed weapons. Come on, gods, uh, tell me it's a two-handed weapon. It is in fact a two-handed weapon. <laughs> Let's go, so I get to re-roll that. Yeah. And that hits. Yes, it does. And he takes five piercing. Also, your range is 80, by the way. So, yeah. Eight. You hit anyone from just because anywhere. Was... No, no, I was just wondering because there's a whole entire corpse in the way. But he's not standing, so it shouldn't be a problem. So, yeah, you just unleash your crossbow once more and plug his friend in the chest, kind of spinning him off balance a little bit. Crossbow bolt. As the boy you just shot, it's gonna take an off balance pair of sword slashes at Krell. First one hits. Uh, for eight points damage. Ow. Yikes. Krell is not looking good at all right now. We can. It'll be fine. We can take care of this. Two we guys still have a handful of potions on spoon. Ex yeah, exactly. So, if need be, I can just force feed her one once if she gets knocked out. <sighs> the only problem is her big damage spells. I'd have no matter which angle I fire from, one or both of you would be in the radius. Yikes. So you don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of leeway with what you can do. Well, at least range spell wise. Oh right, yeah. So, do a backflip, my lash in the stimper. She's going to bonus action disengage with her nipple escape racial feat. Hell yeah! And... Goblins. I had to check a range on a spell. She's gonna back away into this corner over here. And she's gonna cast Fairy Fire. Nice. In this box. Uh oh. So, each object in that 20 foot by 20 foot cube is outlined in violet light. Any creature in that area is also outlined in that light, but you get a deck save against it. So, so I have to go yeah, a deck save? Yeah, you get a deck save. And <laughs> minus one for that, so that's happy. Unfortunately, 
hopefully we can dispa dispatch these fellas before uh, so they made it. Now Liz and this boy right here are glowing purple. Has the man down below actually made his save? Shit. So uh, you have advantage to hit this boy. If as long as you can see it, and it can't benefit from being invisible. Although as a sword wielding human, it's unlikely he'll be going invisible anytime soon. Dead people don't get turns, it's Liz's turn. Okay. I don't think I will spend my other spell slot in case we need it, so we're going to Lash this guy with bit. my long sword. Uh. And I miss. Yep. Two okay. nines. Even though both of them are with advantage. Yeah. <laughs> and is the boy right under Liz that's attacking next? It'd be funny if he still somehow missed both. Oh, and Krell's got to take a uh, long rest to get her spell slots back. Ah. Well, I, I used my second win and my action yeah. talk. So it would probably be in our best interest to, after we dispatch these fools, to take a good long break and think of our strategy. So yeah, boy below list gets two short sword attacks at advantage. Uh, 17 misses. But the 21 will hit. Uh. As you take a further 7 points piercing damage. Boy, these guys are. Yeah, this is what happens when we start fighting people to get multiple attacks. Yeah, that's true. And we're about to casually stroll into these guys' base. <laughs> I don't know about casually, but we are going to roll into their... Oh, it's my turn. Either way, it's Spoon's turn. Lovely. You still get advantage on this guy. And this guy here is behind the cover that is Alyssa's form. That's 30. So I'm going to run over to this fella and hit him with my greatsword. Alright, roll the hit. Uh, 26 will definitely hit this man. 12. So yeah, you sprint across the room shortly after plugging this man with an arrow and you get kind of a spin in your final step as you bring your great sword sideways, burying it deep into this man's chest as he slumps over sideways to the ground as your sword gently sloshes off of his body. Uh, dead people still don't get turns. This is now Krell's turn. And, uh... I think that's got a range of 30. 60, okay. Ooh. You're outmatched and outgunned. Just give up already. As she vicious mockeries him. Two damage. Another two damage. So or wisdom one save. point of damage. Damn it! <laughs> I will eventually actually damage someone with vicious mockery eventually. It, it, does it just negate it or does it just do damage? Uh, if you succeed on your throw, 
You take no damage. Oh, fuck. And Liss is up. Barely. Okay. Again, just a slash. Yeah, Five, I'm 20 for that. For 10 nice. points damage. As you bury your long sword in this man's shoulder region. He's going to take his short sword and go for the gut. Uh, 23 will definitely hit as he yeah. goes for three damage. Dropping three damage. <laughs> God damn it. He rolled that's, three damage. That's, that's such like a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah, just like you buried your sword. Man, I run you through. His opponent, what? his opponent dispatched, he'll move across the room and give a short sword attack at Liss with a nat one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> or spoon, sorry. So i down. So yeah, he, in his hurry, runs over you and just goes for a wild swing completely missing and ends up hunched over as we move into your turn which you now have advantage to hit this man on your first attack this turn fuck yeah i do i'm just gonna bring my great yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad 20 and how do you want to do this because you need to roll a three in damage to kill him yeah so basically i as he's as he's hunched over, I like grab his head, that up. I take my hand, I stab my greatsword into the ground, I gouge out one of his eyes, and then slam his neck into my greatsword. Holy shit! Well, that was incredibly violent. Krell says and... as he moves across the. When you're in a fight like this, and you've already felt defeated, you. PUT ON A SHOW! For who? Everyone but us is dead. Liss For is on me! Ass. <laughs> and needs well, to pull can... a death saving throw now. Oh, we can take care of that. Uh, I need to, to roll... Let's death see. saving throw. That's a oh. fail. At least it's not a one. Oh. You only had to roll the first uh -huh. one. Wait, can I just wait? Can I just give him a healing potion? Uh, yeah, well, you could force feed him one, yes. Well, yeah, that's the plan. I'm just gonna kind of like, I'm gonna kind of like, like lightly lift his head up and try and give him a healing potion. All right. Uh, two d four plus two, I believe. Two d four plus two. Okay. Slash R. Two d oh, space. Well, hey, look at that. So, yeah, Liss heals for nine points of damage, bringing him back up to eight positive as he regains Mike. consciousness. Thanks, friends. No problem, comrade. You got me back up as well, so it was only fair for me. And, uh, Krell, you should probably drink one of these as well. Cause I've got I've got three of them. All right. That's too many else. <sighs> Pretty sure it was better at fighting than I remember. Worse at fighting than I remember. Well, yeah, perhaps you just had an off day. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. Krell's feeling quite a bit better. Is still the down on keeps spell slots, you? but alive. Is the barkeep still here? Um. Hmm. 
We should probably have left one alive to ask him. That's why I'm back. asking. About, that's why I'm asking about the barkeep. Because assuming I'm assuming she was entangled with these guys. Roll me so, investigation with advantage. Lovely. Fourteen. So yeah, doing a quick sweep of the area, you spot her cowering behind the bar over in this general area. Yeah, I'm just gonna like hop over the uh, the bar and um, begin making my way towards her. All perception. Three. All right. <laughs> Assuming she's just in this corner, I'm just gonna fucking waltz right up to her. Oh, You're just God. walking on the bar at this point. Oh, that's on the my bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna approach. You would know this an old school way of map drawing. Right, yeah. I would have normally described exactly what you're saying, but my brain's programmed for people that have played for a while. Right, I totally get you, man. It happens. Alright, so you make your way over there, and, You, you kind of cut out, what'd you say? I didn't cut out, I stopped talking. Oh, okay. Alright. So yeah, just as you get within arm's reach of her, she thrusts out at you with an old and rusty dagger, and you manage to move out of the way. You're used to dirty last attempts. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and, uh, like... Like, if I sidestep, I'm just gonna, like, uh, reach around and, like, put her in a chokehold. Uh, make an athletics check. Gladly. 18. <laughs> this is just the yeah, harder. <laughs> like, uh, like, I'm not- I'm just trying to restrain her. I'm not actually trying to, like, choke her. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't quite catch that. Can you say that again, please? Wow. I space and I was rolling the opposing roll. I'm that's that's upsetting. <laughs> As you go to wrap this woman in your choke worlds. How dare you put your hands on a woman and she reaches out and smacks you across the face. I'm sorry! A bunch of your... A bunch of boys in your bar just to kill us! And I'm expected to believe that you didn't have some sort of plot in this? Uh, roll intimidation. Gladly. Six. <laughs> uh... Wait, hold on. Hey, can I go behind him and show myself to give him an advantage or something? Uh, I mean, yeah, like, sure can. All right, cool. Now we'll roll again. Seventeen. Of course, to some degree, I'm working with them. They use my place Perfect. as sort of a base of operations, but I don't know a lot Love. of their goings on. Do you know anything about their main base over at, um, I wrote it down, but my notes got closed when I, over at, uh, Trensadar Manor? Uh, 
Like I just said, I don't have very much knowledge about their goings on. Hmm. She kind of looks away from you as she says this. As if she can't maintain eye contact. Missy, we just killed a bunch of these goons, alright? And as devastating as it would be, I'm willing to kill you for this cause as well. So either look me in the eye and or tell me the truth. What are you doing this? Krell's just looking around the bar for anything interesting. And roll me intimidation with advantage. 23. Wow. Fine. I'll tell you what I know. Good. Now I gotta find that page. Hit that there, edit box. the forest behind the manor there's a tunnel hidden by a thicket that's how they seem to be getting in and out but really that's all I know That's everything. You're not hiding anything else? Really, it's everything I know. Just anything that, the only thing that could be useful. Most of what I hear is just general gossip about jobs they do. Okay. So, Lucky to there's no problem. Much. Well, that's helpful to us. Um, I'll leave you with one more question. Why were you entangled? Well, there's many of them, and one of me, and you saw how they fight. Uh, so they threatened you, is that right? Pretty much. And they take most of what I bring in, if they even choose to pay at all. Lovely. <clears throat> Then I believe we're done here. I don't I... have any problems with these brigands anymore. <laughs> yes, we've been... Well, I can't say much, but you won't have troubles with it. At least these four. Crow's oh, just going please. through pockets at this point. <laughs> yes, those four. And I assure you, they will want nothing to do with you. It's, uh... Once we take their leader out. Uh, uh, Stoom, let's mm. check their their belongings to see if they have anything of value to to us in case in information or something. Mm, yes. Uh, as, as I say that, you can clearly see my eyes and speak about gold. I will slide over the bar once again and roll roll over to rummage through pockets. <laughs> Crow is already way ahead of you. <laughs> and it's uh, already managed to with... take any coin of value. They still have some of their equip. They still have most of their equipment on them. Find anything useful on these fellows? One Besides bit of coin. coin. Actually, what is Nothing Krell's else. armor? Shame. 
Hmm. Uh, she's gonna turn to Spoon. Can you find one of these men with out any holes in their armor? Preferably uh, without much blood. Sh sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll 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 probably look for one of the ones. I like crossbowed there's probably not like one of the ones that I didn't sh throw so maybe he's not like bleeding a uh, the... I mean I only shot two guys this one right here is the one you this shot in the neck. one of them has to be bleeding less yeah I think this is the one I shot the, so just plainly there's definitely blood on his armor but it's not nearly as damaged as any of the others then yeah I will uh I'll I'll bind this fellow with my with some of my rope. I'll cut a little bit of uh, my rope. I've got ten feet of it. I have so to ask why you're binding a corpse. <laughs> she asked, she asked me to. Uh, she asked you to look for decently good armor on the men. Oh, I swear to God, you said the word bind. The... I. I, out of everything that happened, you, I guarantee fucking T, I heard the word bind come out of Uh, that is entirely possible. I don't remember <laughs> my exact wording. Uh, yeah, so I, I was just testing your ability to sense things. Nailed it. <laughs> As I'm like, this one's the least bloody, so, um, do what you will. She'll spend some time and uh, sleight of hand check. Holy shit. Uh, and we'll eventually remove this man's armor. Getting herself a set of decent quality studded leather. How does that fit on you? I won't yet. I'll have to fit it. <laughs> yes. As this man was medium-sized creature, and she is small-sized creature. Right. Well, we'll get it washed. We'll... I will take it to get fitted. Uh, as good God, after that, we are in need. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, uh, look at these guys. All four of them have red scarves. Yes. Uh, I believe that's the, uh, uh one of the red brands, uh, markings. Exactly. Maybe you should take those scarves when we enter the hideout. Maybe we don't have to fight the whole way through. That's yes, perhaps. not half a bad idea. Well... well what did you say? What? Uh, what did you just said? That's not a half bad idea. Yes. Yes, I agree. We may as we may as well. Not not anything to help can be. Anything that helps will be great. Hey, crow. Oh. Take the scarf off the man she just stripped of his armor. I will, I too will, will strip a scarf off of one of these fellows. Me too. Do, do I need to add a red scarf on my items? Yep. If you want to remember it. Red scarf. I wrote right, right? Lovely. Well, I I suggest we uh, rest up a bit and make way for the manor. That uh, is excellent a fair idea. assessment. As we all gain math.
135 experience points. Left with 735 XP. 535. And Crow is at 685. Stay in. The mark of a champion. And as we prepare for our bit of rest, that's where we'll end the session.